The following game has no ESRB rating, nor is there a listing of any sort of restrictive content that may appear in the game. However, I do know for a fact that it does include violence, bloodshed, explosions, fire, and the death of people and various animals. So if I were to guess as to what its rating would be, I would say either teen or mature. So that being said, viewer discretion is advised, and I recommend that anyone under the age of 13 not watch the following video. You have been warned. Greetings and salutations, I am Outlier, and I bid you welcome to this channel. Joining me today is, of course, my usual co-hosts, Snowball and Wolf. And today, we are returning back to RimWorld. There's a weak space between this episode and the last video that I did because I decided to take a week-long vacation. People are allowed to take breaks. The fact that I'm not classified as people is irrelevant. Yes, I am sure. The usual premise of RimWorld is that you control a group of colonists sent to a far-flung, I guess you could say, technologically advanced-ish world. Well, the reason why I say technologically advanced-ish is that there are several different types of factions on the planet, and some are ad somewhat advanced in the fact that they have laser guns and actual firearms, whereas others are part of an ancient interstellar empire and they have you know, psionic abilities and you know, laser swords and gravity god knows what mallets. And then we have pirate factions which utilize any technology that they can walk off with that isn't nailed down that they can't pry back up. And then we have several tribal factions which attempt to attack you with sharpened sticks. Yes, very technological-ish. So among the diverse collective of people, uh, you usually find your colony. And you either walk into or drop into the map that you build your colony, build up the colony, and as you play the game, the game throws a variety of beneficial and detrimental uh, randomized events at you to attempt to kill your people and destroy the colony. Which sometimes works and other times it doesn't, but it makes for interesting gameplay. It's part of the reason why I like the game. Yes, I do say usually a lot. And the reason why I say usually is that that is how most people play the game. If you haven't caught any of the episodes so far that I've made of this game, my colonists are a bunch of heavily armed and highly trained, well, highly trained, I guess is the descriptive term, uh, space marines. And they've been sent to the rim world that they are currently on to uh, attack the various pirate bases that they can find. Uh, as they make their way to a evacuation ship, which they will then use to leave the planet. All in the name of the Commonwealth, which is the generally fictitious 
governing body that I invented for the purpose of backstory. That's because this game doesn't have much backstory as a whole, so there isn't much backstory with that. For those who caught last episode, someone might have. I know for a fact they didn't, but someone might have. Uh, things weren't going well for the colonies, so I did what most people would call rage quit. As I've stated before, as long as the AI cheats and uses exploits, I will stack the deck in my favor. So anyway, uh, it, I did not leave the game in a very nice place. And, and in between last episode and now, uh, I played a little bit into the game. And yes, playing it same day as filming, just not during filming, counts as in between episodes. We've had this conversation before. And yes, we will again. So, my colony is currently, I believe, in a better place. Relatively speaking, we'll get on to that shortly. I guess all that's left to say is that this game is, of course, made by... Thank you again. And, uh, that being said, let us begin. Okay, so we are paused, which is a good thing. So, this is the colony as it currently stands. For anyone who has seen, well, I guess now two episodes ago, I, I had a small pack of Yorkshire Terriers. I have since turned them into Yorkshire Terrier Rockies. Because they're eating all of my food and providing little benefit, plus as small dogs, they usually get eaten by wildlife anyway. So, they are now all food. I'm keeping the Labrador Retrievers because they don't die as quickly. Oh, that's a lamb. I yeah. also have sheep. Lots and lots of sheep. I'm also spread out across two bases. Uh, both bases were uh, pirate strongholds that I took. This is uh, Ford Operating Base Antioch, whereas this is... Ford Operating Base, I forget the name of. Yes, I know that's a weird name, and no, that's not its actual name. Let me generate the planet real quick. So, we have FOB Antioch right here. This is something related to a quest. Then we have FOB Talonis, which I'm currently in the process of stripping down for resources, although I probably don't need the resources because if you look at Antioch, I have probably more than I could reasonably use over the course of a game, although we'll still find a way to use it. One of the operating parameters that I am playing this game under is that the group is supposed to be relatively highly mobile. And if we can't take it with us, we're supposed to burn it. So that way, the pirates can't take it. So we're in the process of taking things apart. Uh, I did recently send in a caravan and hauled off well, most of the stuff that was in Talonis. So it's just basically, right now, anything that the caravan couldn't carry and a few spare parts that Sky and Hercules might need. Was everybody else, including the additions to the team, are currently at Antioch, and this is where we're stockpiling. And as soon as, because winter just started in, uh, my plan is once spring hits to send another caravan up to Talonis and uh, finish taking it apart. But it's winter now, and people move slower, and it's a little bit more hazardous. So hopefully, Hercules and Sky don't get uh, attacked by something. Very not nice, and uh, they perish because it's just the two of them. Last non redacted episode, uh, they were under attack by a bunch of pirates that attacked from two sides.
DS, so I'm well aware. It's a Ford operating supposed military base, and its defenses are crappy. It is something I need to work on. A lot of things I need to work on. Lou and Bowman were infected with disease. At the end of that episode, they have since succumbed to it. They are still alive because I know for a fact that Rimworld will try to kill my people as much as possible. So I packed in 10 Resurrector Mech Serums uh, to help replace the losses. And I've used about 5 of them now. Oh, I do believe I picked up a few. So probably closer to 7. So that's the state of the last official episode. Uh, in between episodes, Tater and I think Bowman actually. Yeah, Tater and Bowman became lovers, so they now share a bedroom. And uh, I last uh, and I left the in between playthrough at the. Oh, I almost forgot. Uh, so we do have one extra quest: climate adjuster for pay. So if we saw at the world map, there was this object called a climate adjuster and it's got uh, and it's just in the climate in a radius of 10 squares and it's guarded by a manhunter pack of three ibexes and if we look at the quests uh valentine court corticos i have no idea if i'm pronouncing that correctly but then again it's a made-up name so might as well be the correct pronunciation anyway he's a so they are a baron of the refugee empire traveling near uh, FOB Antioch. He is being followed by his enemies and wants your help using signals to draw them towards uh, FOB Antioch. If you do, his enemies will activate a site nearby to harass you. There's a climate adjuster machine. They're shifting the regional temperature by 18 degrees Fahrenheit and three man hunting ibex is wandering nearby. Set will remain until you go destroy it. And for rewards, I chose. A psychic reader and Elix shirt good because the other offerings weren't all that interesting. So there's that, and that is currently adjusting the temperature. I think it's actually making it warmer, which, because it's winter, I will not argue. It's now currently 51 degrees, and it is, I guess, 6 p.m. 6 p.m. But anyway, right as I was ending the in between episodes playthrough, a mech cluster dropped in. A mechanoid cluster dropped in. These guys right here. So they, they are not associated with any quest, it's just a random thing that happened. So they come equipped with a defoliator, which apparently kills all plant life within the radius. And the radius is currently 5, will expand in 9 days. And initiates in 3.4 days. They are currently off. It's also got three pikemen, which are long-range centipedes, uh, a couple mini slug turrets, an auto-charge turret, which is, I guess, a long-range turret, and a gloom light. So these drop. Oh, and a couple walls. So these guys dropped in just now, and uh, my choices are to leave them be. Uh, which is probably not good long run because the defoliator will probably kill off all my farms and they will most likely eventually wake up and start attacking my people. So we need to deal with them uh, quickly and we need to deal with them promptly and as soon as I can find it we will deal with them like I dealed with them the last time which was technically off, off camera. So, no one got to see it. So, that's a puppy, that's an alpaca, that's a stockpile, that's a puppy again. And I don't think anything's actually there. So, where is... Oh, I'm looking for something that I brought with, that I had the uh, team drop in with, in case they needed some extra muscle that six charge rifles and four charge lances, I think it were, uh, couldn't handle and I know I dropped in with four of them I know I used three of them and well one of them and there's another one an orbital bombardment targeter so what are we going to do we're going to have everybody uh, draft everybody get everybody into the same area get all of the animals into area one which is the designated safe area for them so they don't get caught in the crossfire, which 
can and does and will sometimes happen. Unfortunately, I do have a lot of animals, so this will take a few minutes. But the wonder of editing, and everybody's good. So if we just simply start time, we see all the animals gathering in here. All my people are eventually going to hike up there. A couple of them are suffering from uh, food poisoning, which makes them walk slower. Also, somebody got their bit left big toe bitten off. I don't want to know how. I'm fairly certain I already do. So. We pause it again. Who's got the best gunnery? So 14, 14, 15, 14, 13, 14, 14, 15, 5, 9, 1, and 6. I could have blew a sniper rifle if he was only got 5 shooting. What point? Uh, so, let's see. Jet had some of the, one of the highest, so he is going to equip the Orbital tar Bombardment Targeter. They did recently update the game, so things are slightly different from how they were before. Oh, goody. He actually can now carry multiple things. Used to be in the past, uh, they could equip a weapon or something else. So, you know, if he was going to be using the orbital targeter, he would have had to drop his uh, charge lance. I'm glad that is no longer the case. So, we are going to have everybody move out this way. Now, my one plan was to have the guy with the orbital targeter come in through here and be protected by the wall, but. the range on these turrets again. Okay, so this tree. And Chief has broken and has uh, become obsessed with corpses because in the middle of combat, nothing says effective discipline like breaking down and wanting to dig up a body. So Chief is going to do that so long as he doesn't break anything. I guess uh, everybody else will make fun of him afterwards. Because he ain't helping me fight. So as I was saying, my one thought was to come in through this way. That way the uh, turrets, you would uh, have to f shoot through their wall. I don't know if in fact he can do that. So let's save in case this all goes south. technically fire it from here and we'll cover everything, so let's go do that. Alright, so it didn't actually kill everything. Uh, there is one pikeman still left, so he is stunned. We're going to hide amongst this tree. I'm assuming he can still fight. So what we're going to do is we're just going to shoot it. Of course he can't. And he's no longer stunned, so now they really gotta kill it. And now it's dead. Alright, so who got hit? No one! Okay, good. That is how we deal with that. And, uh, let's see. Where is... 
Let's make that a home location. Undraft everybody so they put out the fire so it doesn't spread. And we should probably do that in these areas as well. Alright, that is how you kill a mechanoid cluster. I just hope, uh, you know, get more orbital targeters before I run out of, well, before they send more mech clusters. I'm fairly certain I still have two more. I just don't know where they are in the massive pile of stuff. And, of course, there's a fire. Extinguish the fire. Thank you. And we're good. Just uh, clear out these areas. Like these areas as part of the home. Because why not? Should be all in one nice continuous thing anyway. Alright, so who did, did Chief dig up? Ah, return of Newt. She died a year ago. Well, I guess all the mental breakdowns that could happen, digging up skeletons, putting them in closets, probably. And, uh, Lincoln did not participate because he's moving slowly, he was far away, and I forgot he was there. Oopsie. Alright, so... I haven't really done much. This is the barracks. This is barracks overflow crafting area animal pen which I should probably let them out and uh, of course massive stockpile of stuff kitchen rec room dining room battery power room power the original defensive line uh, farm patch farm patch farm patch another farm patch for medical supplies and Big farm patch for hay grass because that many animals will strip the land bare of native growth. Relatively quickly, I should point out. Well, my buffalo was never in area one. Yeah, because of food shortages, a couple of the buffalo went feral again. So I'm down to basically two male buffaloes. So I can't grow that herd anytime soon. Though there is a whole pack of buffalo up here. You hear them girls? One. That's an oak tree. Two. Three. I guess four and five. Let's just try to tame them all. Alright, so what's the quest? Alright, so, Imperial Shuttle down. A shuttle of the refugee empire is taking damage and seeking a place to land. It's Commander Haki, okay, wants to land at, uh, Fob Talonis. Tribes people from the Camino Alliance will attack the crash shuttle and attempt to kill its occupants. You must defend them. Uh, the shuttle contains Haki, another civilian, and five Janissaries. Commander and civilian must be rescued, but the Janissaries may be sacrificed. After eight hours, the rescue shuttle will come down and pick up the survivors. You need to get them all on board within 12 hours. As you've most likely seen with quests from the uh, M Imperial Faction, you can generally accept it for Imperial Favor, which increases the social status and rank of one of your people. Much like the need to stay slightly somewhat mobile, but not actually because I haven't actually moved anywhere yet, uh, I don't have my people accept Royal Favor because they work for the Commonwealth, and head cannon backstory ish fill in the blank whatever term you wish to use reason states that they can't accept uh, royal favor well, favor from a foreign government so rather than accepting royal favor we get a bunch of goodwill and well I can destruct deconstruct and move the shuttle assuming the uh, Canto Alliance doesn't destroy it first so I can get an elix so I get Basically, inst basically, instead of royal favor, uh, I get stuff and goodwill, so 
I can improve relate. So I can accept for one of three options. I can uh, accept for goodwill and whatever I can take apart the shuttle for. And accept for an L for an Ltex robe and an Ltex helmet, which affects side casting ability. Which because no one has Imperial rank and we declined the one rebel mission because much like not accepting a royal favor, we also can't technically start a war between any faction other than the pirates. Basically, people who factions who start neutral, who start the game neutral, I need to make certain stay neutral. And that's just one of the orders sent by the Commonwealth. Because... Backstory. Yeah, so as I was saying, the um, I don't have any side casting abilities, so this stuff really doesn't mean much to me. But I can get an Elix robe, an Elix helmet, and again the shuttle, or an Elix shirt, uh, psychic reader, and again shuttle loot. I think the psychic reader it gives limited mind reading ability, improving users' ability to get the upper hand in negotiations and social situations. Effect is proportional to users' psychic sensitivity. And other stuff. Uh, so we'll accept for that one. Because this seems easy. Especially if they're giving me troops. Because Fab Talonius only has two people. And the shuttle has crashed. Guessing these are them. So we have Cosellus, uh, who's a guard. I'm assuming he's a Janus, one of the Janissaries. Melinosis or Meli Melisnos. Diogen is another name that's hard to pronounce. Hockey, of course. Maurice. Tiberius. And... Opmore. I'm assuming Opmore, who is current, who doesn't have any weapons. And, uh, Hockey, of course. Are the two people who need to stay alive. And everybody else here is the Janissaries that will be aiding keeping these two alive although I'm surprised usually uh, I get the ability to command the people but apparently not this Alright, so I can't really interact with them right now. Random dead carcass. And uh, the shuttle alive for Oppenmore and Hacky in seven hours. I guess we wait until then. I am surprised that I'm not able to, I'm not given direct control of these people. Every other quest that I've seen where I have to take care of people, they've become colonists, for lack of a better term. They are considered not part of the faction. Uh, I don't have as much control over them as I would, say, actual colonists. But I'm still able to give them orders. I'm still able to draft them and give them commands while drafted for some health and safety and defense. But for some reason, I can't do that here. I don't know if that's a glitch or intentionally designed, but uh, we'll see what happens. Hang on.
He's probably just gonna wander around until he gets hungry or he collapses or both. That's usually what happens. Is this going to be a case that the war gets hunting lamb seven for food? Well, that stinks. Shoot it. Oh, that's not good. And here they are, right where the Janissaries are. So, I guess help out. Well, that works while well injured. Just deal with this real quick. Uh, hunt that. It's fine. She'll be dead in 16 hour in 19 hours. Uh, now medical bed. Go rest until healed. Tater's the closest thing I got to a medic. Okay. And uh, on to this thing. See that alert? She's got an extreme break risk, okay. And uh Tater. Herders tending to Yoko. The trapped people from the Alliance are now fleeing. Oh yeah, my guys did well, mother. Still my stuff. Like I said, some of these people fight with sticks. Yeah, no one's injured at all. Alright, so he got shot by one of his own people, but uh, he's in no immediate danger, and he's going to be gone in three hours anyway. 15 hours, 12 hours, so uh, Diogenes will be dead in 12 and Coselli will be dead in 14. However, their shuttle will be arriving in 3, so I'm guessing everything will be fine. Add five more plots to the bear to the uh, pile. They're still cleaning up from the last flight. It's 
It's also snowing. I guess he self-tended himself. Because now he's in no immediate danger. I'm surprised these guys don't have that recon helmet and parkas. I'm saying, well, they're janissaries, not uh, cataphracts. So I'm saying, I'm surprised they didn't have uh, powered armor. Different kind of troop, I guess. basically tending their own wounds. You know, I like the fact that they put the uh, mechanoids in the fridge. And the rescue shuttle has arrived. So will you guys be getting on it? Yes, they will. Well, let's say some of them are. Yoko's problem. She's hungry. Well, she's free to eat anything. Something. Yoko's gotten food poisoning. Can't imagine why. It's just cooked in a filth pit and eaten in an even worse filth pit. Taters taking care of Yoko. hauling stuff. There's a rhinoceros at times. Alright, so I was going to say, is everybody in the shuttle? But no, there's one guy left. And he is... still healing himself. So now he's getting onto the shuttle. And now they're on, and now they're away. And now we get paid for doing absolutely nothing. I will not complain. Alright, get that stuff in there. That stuff in there. Get stuff in the uh, stockpile. Good. Now can deconstruct this. What exactly do we get? So, crash shuttle, space tech shuttle designed for transfer between surface and orbit or between moons of a planetary system. Does not say, oh, it's 100% flammable. Goody. Well, it is basically a flying bomb. Or, well, a flying metal canister filled with flammable stuff like fuel and accelerant and probably O2 tanks and god knows what else, so yeah. Prioritize taking apart the shuttle. I'm curious what we get. I'm legitimately curious. Alright, so just standard stuff, steel, components, and plastic. All the components. And uh, life continues on, I guess.
So next thing that we need to do is we'll empty out everything here. Then we take this thing apart because this was overflow storage because this doesn't fit everything. And uh, once we take this apart, so remove the roof off of that. And once the roof is gone, we take apart the walls and, up and rip up the floor. And uh, then we will have one less building we have to worry about. And Yoku is now having a tantrum. She's going to dis destroy the steel mortar. Because she is recreation starved. So, who the heck is closest? Okay, so, successfully arrested Yoko, she no longer has a tamper tantrum, and uh, we let her go. I mean, I don't have much ammo for the mortar anyway, I don't think. And it's not like I can no longer... It's not like it's something I can't reproduce. I can build more mortars. Same with turrets. It's also not like I don't have a very large pile of steel. A surprising large pile of steel. So Hercules is just harvesting a bunch of heel root because outside of food, the next thing I'm always constantly running out of is meds, so. Ooh, cargo pods. Patch leather. Okay. Kind of not an issue and who is starving? So my Labradors are starving because I don't have enough means of making kibble. In fact, we're also out of meat. Kibble requires both meat and plant matter. So if we look at wildlife, we have an injured warg that apparently ate a muffalo. Of course, the muffalo. Bunch of boomer lobes, a couple of mega sloths. Well, I don't like hunting boomer lobes and boomer rats in when it's not raining because they like to explode and catch fire when they die, and uh, it's the rain would help put that out. So let's hunt the rat. Much as I would like the muffalo, they are made out of food. Hunt the mega sloths as well. I know it's a risk because they're more prone to attacking, and I've literally seen a mega sloth kill somebody. Not this playthrough, thankfully, but uh, it's bound to happen eventually. Here we go. 
And it's also named Sausage because this was a Mega Sloth that self-tamed, uh, became friendly with my people, and then because we didn't weren't able to maintain its training, uh, it decided to. Oh goody! Research is research for gas operation is complete. Craft high power guns like chain shotguns, uh, light machine guns, and heavy submachine guns. Okay, we are going to pause for a second. Take stock and things. You two go here. And, uh, you run this way. And now it's dead. Okay. We're good. Yeah, so he got uh, bitten clean through the torso, and uh, he'll be dead in 22 hours. So, rest until he yield. Oh, and he's Tater, too. The Doc, for lack of a better term. I'm going to have himself then, because he can do that. And another Mega Sloth Revenge. Who is shooting? Oh, there you are. Okay, so we're just going to have you flee. Right, uh, this way. And, uh... I'm going to have you two waiting for the Mega Sloth. Assuming you don't, you know, just spend the entire time vomiting up all over the cornfield. And a Muffalo Revenge. And this time it's the entire pack. So... yeah. Back this way. I'll put them there. Okay, so he's injured. Are you guys over this way. And Ophelia is under attack. Ophelia is down. They may not make it to the ba back to the uh, the base. At least no one's still attacking, they're not still attacking Ophelia. And she's technically not in any major immediate danger. She got knocked down and trampled, I guess. And, uh, they're good now, I guess. So, who's injured? Celia. Tater is sleeping it off. That's nice of him, but, uh... Yeah, issues. Oh, we actually still have one incoming. Add one incoming. Just shoot that one. Hope the yak doesn't get hit. And, uh... Go up over here. Trudy, the Labrador Retriever, is picking up the charge rifle. And now we have meat.
Okay, this one's taking a long time to actually, you know, get shot. Alright, so all that, and no one's bothering to rescue uh, Amelia. Good to know. I actually... Hater was, I'm sorry. And he's finally back there, so yeah. Where did Hater go? And it's closer. Okay, so her right lung was hit by a charge rifle because friendly fire is a thing. Still no immediate danger from anybody, although Jet decides to just simply up and vomit. And one thing I should probably build is a medical facility. Right now I'm just using spare beds. I don't like the fact that that war is just sitting right there. Uh, life goes on. No, I probably should have installed lights in this thing. I still can, I guess. That way they're all in the power grid. Not to worry about stretching extension ports. But that does yeah, so there's one orbital. So I do have two more orbital bombardment targeters. Doesn't that explain where Ophelia's charge light rifle went. I know it's in here somewhere, in fact, I'm guessing that's it right there. Full so clip it. And this area is now clean-ish. Better than what it was. I will not complain. Oh, I almost forgot. We need a research project. 
So we got guns. And we do have quite a few other options. We can beer some brew, we can make we we can research mushroom well we can research beer making. We can research mushrooms that can be turned into clothing after a ridiculous amount of long period. Research carpet making, we can research uh, preserved food, we can research drug making, we can research making basic curve recurved bows, we can research planting cocoa trees, we can research noble uh, apparel, we can research swords, we can research musical instruments, we can research actual drug production. We can also research, research better doors, hydroponics, very, uh, sterile materials, various other things, including biofuel making and uh, well, chem fuel making from biodegradable stuff, basically plant matter, uh, geothermal power, prosthetics, milk pot packs, or we can just simply jump to microelectronics, which will get us more advanced stuff if we build a more advanced bench. I don't really have the room right now, but uh, never know when a sword could be useful, so let's research uh, swords. Or long blades, I should say. I wonder if they can equip both a rifle and a melee weapon right now. Manhunter pack of what? Oh, a manhunting pack of Yorkshire Terriers have entered the area. Driven insane by disease known as Scaria, they roam the region hunting for human flesh. They won't attack doors unless they see somebody go through the door, hide inside, and you'll be safe. This will attack powered off turrets, so turn your turns off to save them. The Orchestra Terrors will leave the area in one or two days. You can hide and wait them out or fight them. Where are they located? Ah! They, all two of them, are located at Fob Talonis. Probably revenge for the pack that I ate, even though that pack was at uh, Antioch. So. One down. Two down. And more Yorkshire Terrier Rocky. Works for me. Even though technically you could argue they were rabid, but uh game didn't make them rotted, so anything not rotted is food. Ish, kind of, sort of. Anything edible that isn't rotted is food. Let's make that clear. say this, that climate adjuster has actually been to my benefit. I think it's actually raising the winter, well the temperature of this winter, at least at Antioch, by 18 degrees. So right now it's currently actually above freezing. Whereas at Talonis, it's 25 and I think snowing? It was snowing. Let 
curious if they can equip one melee weapon and a uh, ranged weapon. Something tells me no. Yeah, something tells me no. It would've been nice. Okay, so we have an interesting conundrum. We have a Boomalope that's self-tamed. That's him right there. We also have a Mad Boomalope. Part of me thought they might actually end up being the same Boomalope, but, uh, no. They're not. Alright, so who's nearby? Yes, I know I need to build defensive emplacements. It's on my to-do list. Is this a mad one? Yes, this is mad. And it exploded. That is why we do not hunt them unless it's raining. And this is the one that's self-tamed. That there. I really dislike the fact that they won't actually put out a fire unless it's within the home location. So it's like literally just on the edge, they won't put it out. Fire prevention should actually be the top priority of every colonist, yeah, but Lincoln's got it. So it's 40 degrees Fahrenheit, and he's refueling the passive cooler. So relations have deteriorated with a bunch of hostile factions, so it doesn't really matter. Okay. Can you use Haygrass to make kibble? They can use hay to make kibble. Middle of winter, and it's actually warmer outdoors than it is indoors. That amuses me. And I just realized, I wired the uh, entire storage facility 
didn't actually connect it to the power grid. Yeah. I read the whole thing up and it's not even connected to the actual grid. Let's connect this in multiple places for redundancy purposes. unless we absolutely have to. What's a smoke launcher? When I build a smoke shell launcher, the shell will upon impact this close smoke screen coming shots preventing turrets from walking on. It doesn't actually do damage per se, but it might be useful as part of a group assault. So, heavy submachine gun does 12 damage. As the chain shotgun does 18. That's so a blue with her 5 uh, shooting capability. Probably isn't going to actually hit anything with a sniper rifle. I actually thought it was higher. And now we have light. Well, now it's at six. I'll make her a chain shotgun so that way, you know, you don't really need, it's a common semi joke that I keep making is you don't actually aim with a shotgun. Like it's a shotgun, aiming isn't required. Of with Ophelia sleeping on it off. This is not a prison. Just a regular room. There's only one cook, so they're constantly making just meals as opposed to kibble for the dogs. Which is kind of what I would prefer, but uh, oh well. Where's he going with that? But he's making metal. Well, he's making steel out of the slag, so. Always fun. Wait, they got axes now? Okay then. Alright, so this has been interesting. We've had break risks, we've had 
robots attack us. We've had animals attack us. Some of it self-inflicted. Uh, we have met some passers-by which who were slightly friendly and they helped. Well, they did all the legwork in fighting off the people hunting them. It's mostly because they decided just to hang off on their own. But on that note, I shall call it here. Everybody stay safe from the plague and um, have a good day.